What you see on the screen right now is a 360 degree environment created in Stable Diffusion and Blender. And I'm Łukasz from the Blender Smoothie channel. Today I will show you how to create such a panorama that you can use as HDRI, VR space or AI animation. Let's get started. We will be using Automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI. It's a GUI for using the Stable Diffusion that is free and open source. You can download it from link in the description. And you will need also a quite powerful GPU. Uh, for example, uh, at least 4 gigs of graphic RAM and you can use that on Windows and Linux and you can also use Apple uh, Silicon so the newer MacBooks with M1, M2 processors will be alright so I won't cover the installation process on this video because there are many tutorials on this subject and it's quite easy uh, on this website there is six steps installation guide available for Windows and even easier installation on Linux. So install it on your local machine and use webui.sh on Linux or webui.bat for Windows. Then wait until the URL will show up in your console. Then open the URL in your browser and go to the extensions tab. Then install from URL and paste the URL from the description. This is the plugin that allows us to do asymmetric tiling. Copy the name below and click install wait until it's installed and in installed tab click apply go to the text to image tab and I will now copy my prompt monoscopic 360 VR it's the most important part telling the stable diffusion that we want an omnidirectional shoot the more parentheses the greater the weight of the expression in addition I also included a expression style and path in the park which describes the theme of the picture. I will copy the negative prompts and all the prompts will be available in the video description. I have to also change the size of the generation and in the asymmetric tiling, it's the tab from our plugin, I have to check tile X and activate the plugin then we are ready to generate then we have to just wait I will speed up that process the more sampling steps you will set the more details you will get but it will take longer so for the interiors you may try for example 50 so here we have our result isn't that pretty? I think that's really beautiful image. So right now I want to send it to the extras tab to upscale it to even higher resolution. So click send to extras and here we have to choose our upscaler. I will choose that one and I want use upscaler 2. So just that's okay press generate and you will have to wait. At first time it will take longer because the web UI will download the upscaler model so be patient. Ok, so our image is ready in 20 seconds. I will click on it and press open a new tab and really really I'm I'm really satisfied <laughs> by this uh, uh, this result so I 
will save it. Just right click and select save image as. And we are ready to go to the Blender. In Blender press X to delete the default cube and then go to the shading tab. Here change the view to the world and we'll have to add an environment texture so shift plus A and then find an environment texture. Press open and find the, find the saved image. Connect the color output to the background input and if we will change the viewport to render then we can see the result. I will also add a bright contrast note to just modify the brightness and contrast a little bit. So that's okay, I think. And uh, right now the horizon uh, isn't in the middle, so I will add also and texture coordinate and also mapping node to correct our horizon level so connect the generated output to the vector input and the vector output from the mapping node to the input of our environment texture so now I will set our view I want to set the horizon so I will set the view you can do it manually or click on X axis but then you have to change the perspective then we can change the Z axis on mapping node so that the horizon will be just in the middle you can look around and our environment texture is ready and right now as a bonus I will show you how to create an animation loop that starts and ends in the same place so you could just loop it the same animation that you seen before so select the camera view and go to the view and select the camera go to the view tab and select camera to view that locks the camera and you can move it just like moving your view. Select the camera then go, go to the camera properties and select the focal length for example 22 millimeters uh, so the camera will see more environment like that and right now I will press I to insert the keyframe then move to the next uh, frame for example 50 frame it press I and also create another keyframe then go to the next frame and repeat that process creating another another keyframes okay and one more here I'm just moving pressing I and then you have to select the first frame and paste it on the last frame just copy and paste Ctrl C, Ctrl V and let's have a look it's rotating, ok, it's rotating and now <gasps> it's coming back and that's not what we want so select the last frame select the camera and in the item properties you have to add just click here and uh, at 360 degrees if you are rotating the clockwise you have to press minus 360 so right now it moves from 
to the left, to the left, and also to the left, and you can see that the animation starts right where it ended. So that's it. That's our animation. You can just render it and have fun. <laughs> if you want to add an AI style to the whole video, as I did in the video you have seen uh, at the beginning, uh, then I am using the AI render, but it's a whole different story, so I will put an extended version uh, explaining that on another video soon and I just render the, all the frames using AI renderer with the same prompt I have used for creating our environment texture then I just merge all the images using FFMPGA and also you, I have used uh, another AI to put more frames. So if you are interested in that topics, please let me know in the comment section. So that's all for today. Please click like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. Bye.